Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well. I'm here this week with a video on what PhD students actually do. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, I did record this video last week and then when I watched it back, I was like, I just don't sound like me. I was talking really slowly and in real life, I do not talk slowly. I am very animated. My speech comes out faster than my brain can think at times. But I think that's important for these videos that I am as much myself as possible. And if I'm not my true self in these videos, that's going against really what I believe in. So I thought, scrap it, we'll record it again, and I will speak at my normal pace and use words I'd normally use and yeah, just do it properly. Basically, always be yourself and never compromise who you are for anyone. I thought I'd start off by going over how my PhD has been for the past few weeks. I am now like a month into my final year. So I just thought I'd give you an overview of that month. The one word to describe my first month of PhD is hectic. And I mean, absolutely hectic. I decided to start all my experiments at once, which is okay for the first week or so, but then a couple of weeks in, you end up just running around trying to do 10 things at once. So that's been pretty much me for the past four weeks. I also gave a seminar last week, which is a talk in front of my entire department about my research. We do these every three months and it's always like a lot of pressure because you want people to not only understand your research, but also to be able to ask you good questions. So you've got to give a good level of detail. So basically to sum up the past four weeks, it's been experiments, experiments, um, experiments and presentation. So absolutely no rest at all. I think it's important in these early videos to actually establish what PhD students do. It's really funny when I go out for dinner with my friends and they're all talking about, you know, office dramas and business problems. And then they're like, Julia, what did you do this week? And I'm like, I kept my cells alive. And they're like, what? So yeah, I think it's good if we establish exactly what a PhD student does. In order to answer this question, I asked you on my Instagram page. So let's take a look at what you thought. Okay, what do we have? Study, stress, panic, cry, read, complain about having too much work. I mean, we just love to complain. We love it. Creative thinking, collect data, data analysis, call themselves stupid, doubt everything they know and occasionally cry. Mm -hmm. Teaching, communication, read lots of papers, experiments, presentations, work hard. So that was just a few of your answers and really it's a bit of a mixed bag. I thought I'd give you an overview as to what I do as a science PhD student to try and answer this question. Every PhD is really different depending on your discipline, so the subject you study or the university you go to. PhDs are also really different depending on the country you study in. I am based in the UK, in London, and I am doing a four year PhD programme. What that programme is, is one year of rotation projects. So I did three small three month projects and from there I chose my PhD project. The PhD project is then three years of which I am two years down, one to go. So most of my time at the minute is spent in the lab. In the lab, what I'm doing is performing experiments. And the reason I'm doing these experiments is to collect data. I'm basically trying to answer questions which we call hypotheses and in order to do this I have to do lots of different tests. The experiments I do are normally using biochemistry techniques so I'm looking at different proteins in the brain. I also do a lot of cell work and this is with little cell babies who are an absolute pain in the I have to keep them alive and feed them and basically just make sure they're happy and I can perform experiments on these too. So yeah, there are so many ways in which you can collect data and perform experiments. Some scientists are in a lab, others are at a computer and use big data in order to address their questions. 
So if you are doing a science PhD, a lot of your degree will be spent doing experiments. I also spend a lot of time at my desk and when I'm at my desk, this is normally to analyse data, make presentations, writing up reports, writing up my thesis, doing admin, organisation, ordering reagents. There is a lot of admin involved when you're doing this type of degree. You also have a lot of side of desk work to do because you're part of a team, you're part of a lab group. Another thing PhD students do is we go to conferences. Conferences are great because you get to meet scientists from all over the world and you get to visit some really, really beautiful places. As a PhD student, you also have to be prepared to do a lot of communication work. And this normally is in terms of doing presentations. These presentations are good for yourself because it keeps you on track of what you've done so far and can allow you to reflect on what you want to do next. Something else you can do while doing a PhD degree is to teach. In the UK, it is not compulsory to teach, but I really love teaching, so I found my own opportunities to go and teach young pupils in London all about their brains. Teaching is great for building your confidence, it's great for your communication skills, and also you get asked some of the trickiest questions. So they are just a few things that you do if you are studying for a PhD. I thought what would be a really nice addition to these videos is for me to answer some of your questions. So this week I asked you, what do you want to know about doing a PhD? So let's pick one question to answer. Okay. Do you have to have a master's to do a PhD? No. In the UK, you do not need a master's to do a PhD. I did a four year undergraduate degree. So the last year of them four converted my bachelor's into a master's. So technically I hold a master's degree, but I didn't do a separate master's. I also know a lot of people who went straight from their bachelor's degree into a PhD. And these people went to places like Oxford, Cambridge, really, really good schools. So yeah, you don't need to do a master's to do a PhD. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch me ramble on today. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below or catch me on my social media pages. Thank you so much. Yeah, so great. <laughs>